If you thought social media changed a lot in 2023, then buckle up because there are some serious changes on the horizon in 2024. Buckle up. Some of these changes you will absolutely love and some of these other ones are going to be disruptive in the worst way possible. I will let you be the judge of which one is which. This video is brought to you by HubSpot, more on them later. For now, let's dive into the first social media trend of 2024. All right, I'm gonna kick off with the one that everyone's gonna hate the most, just to ruffle some feathers, keep things fresh, you know? So this one is all about social commerce, but specifically the fact that social commerce is gonna become a force of nature. If you're listening to this and thinking, what on earth is this girl talking about? What the are you talking about? I have two words for you. TikTok, shop. In case you haven't noticed, TikTok shop is taking the world by storm. And some countries such as the UK have actually had TikTok shop for a while now. However, other markets such as the US have only recently gained access to TikTok shop. And let me tell you, they hate it. <laughs> I don't wanna buy nothing from TikTok shop. Please leave me alone. People hate TikTok shop, but it is not going anywhere. If you don't know what TikTok shop or the general term social commerce is, it's essentially when social media creators are able to sell products using a social media site. So in this example on TikTok shop, a creator can register to be a seller, they can promote a product, they can link it to their content and their audience can shop that product through their content. It's actually quite revolutionary because we're now in an age where products can find us rather than us having to seek out products. I have the perfect example of this. So I got married about a month and a half ago and and my wedding dress found me. I did not find my wedding dress, even though I went to all of these different boutiques. My wedding dress found me on Instagram before I even started looking. It popped up on the explore page and I was like, absolutely yes, sold. And then ran around the UK trying to find a boutique what stocked it and could let me actually try it on and buy it. And that's just one example of how products now find us. Now this change in the way that we shop has actually birthed a whole new form of social media content, which is what we call social commerce. Now on TikTok alone, over two 200,000 creators have registered to become a TikTok shop seller. And as I mentioned, it is being rolled out to more and more markets. Now, TikTok shop is actually TikTok's crowning jewel. Like it is the thing that sets them apart from almost every other social media platform because they are really the only ones who are nailing it. Instagram tried to compete with TikTok on this by introducing a live shopping feature within the last year or so, but they recently closed that down because people weren't using it. Whereas when we look at TikTok, not only are people using it, but it's growing, it's gaining momentum and also also sellers are making a decent income from it because people are purchasing thousands and thousands of products using TikTok shop on a daily basis. Now you could argue that one of the main reasons why this is such a growing trend is because TikTok have really nailed the checkout process when you buy something from TikTok. I don't know if you guys have actually bought anything from TikTok shop before, but there was a whole trending hashtag, which was like, TikTok made me buy it. So I know a lot of people have bought stuff from TikTok, myself included. And if you have, you'll know that the purchase process is seamless. They have nailed it. It's like four clicks and and you'll have the product in your home within the next few days. So as long as creators continue to sign up to TikTok shop as a seller, and so long as us, the audience, continue to buy things using TikTok shop, it will continue to grow. And I can massively foresee that happening in 2024 and beyond. So as always, I'm going to ask the question, what does this mean for you and I? So when it comes to this rise in social commerce, if you are a creator who is looking to diversify their income, or maybe you're just starting out with your journey and you're trying to figure out which direction you wanna go in when it comes to monetizing your presence as a content creator, I highly recommend that you consider TikTok shop as a monetization route for you. As I said, creators are earning a decent income from it. So it's definitely a route for you to consider. If you're a user of TikTok and you just hate those posts, you can actually long press on the video and it will give you an option to like not see any videos like it again. So you can actually train the algorithm to show you fewer TikTok shop posts. You heard it here first. Now, this next trend I'm super passionate about because I've been spotting this happening over the course of 2023 and I've just been waiting for the opportunity <laughs> to talk to you guys about it. So this trend is the end of social media channels copying each other. The days of social media channels copying features from each other and doing the exact same thing, I think are going to end in 2024. So this is no secret, right? In the past, social media channels have had a habit of copying each other. Does anyone remember the days where Snapchat was like a novelty? Where the idea that you could upload like a video of your day or a selfie of yourself and it would, a selfie of yourself, obviously, who else would be the selfie of? <laughs> and it would disappear after 24 hours. That was like this mind blowing, crazy thing that disrupted the social media landscape. And then, 
Instagram released Instagram stories, which is the exact same thing. And then TikTok released TikTok stories, right? And I'm sure you guys know that this isn't the only time that this has happened. TikTok used to be the only platform that would offer vertical short form videos where you could put music over it and do these transitions and do all this fun stuff. That used to be just on TikTok. And then Instagram released Instagram Reels and then YouTube released YouTube Shorts, right? I mean, it got to the point where TikTok and Instagram were even copying brand new apps such as Be Real and releasing their own features that mimics exactly how Be Real works. So why do I think that the days of social media channels copying each other are over? There's a few reasons. The first reason is that they're starting to realize that this doesn't always work. Case in point, I just mentioned in the previous trend that Instagram tried to do a similar thing to TikTok shop with their social commerce and it didn't work and they had to close it down. But in addition to this, I've continuously seen every social media site really leaning into what makes them unique. So before it was like, oh, okay, well, we don't want to be unique. We just want to offer everything that every other platform offers. And now there seems to be a slight strategic change where channels are like, actually, the way for us to maintain our audience and actually grow our audience is to lean into what makes us unique and special. Thank God. <laughs> a perfect example of this sits with Instagram. So throughout the whole of 2023, Instagram continuously released features which lent into the fact that people use Instagram to speak with their friends. Like private sharing on Instagram is more popular than sharing content to a broader audience. So sharing content in your DMs, right? Sharing content to your close friends group. These types of sharing are growing on Instagram and are actually becoming more popular than your standard feed posts to the whole world, right? And in a previous video that I filmed where I talk about all these Instagram updates, you'll notice that there were multiple updates I announced in that video too, which lean into this. It supports my hypothesis. I feel really fancy saying that sentence, but it does. It all supports it. Instagram are continuously releasing updates to enhance their DM feature. They've recently released an update where you can share feed posts to your close friends now, not just your stories. So they're releasing all these features which allow private sharing to really flourish because they know that's what they're good at. They know that their DM feature is better than most other social media platforms and they're leaning into it. And the same can be said with TikTok shop. They know that TikTok shop is what they do better than everyone else. So therefore TikTok are leaning into TikTok shop and they're releasing it in more markets. Do you catch my drift? And that's why I think that's going to be a major trend for 2024. So what does this trend mean for you and I? What this means is that your social media strategy may need a bit of tweaking, but tweaking for the better. Because hopefully what this will result in is so social media channels having their own unique setting point and their own kind of point of differentiation. So your strategy might change in the sense that you will identify unique purposes for each of your social media channels. And I've actually been doing this for the most of 2023 anyway. So my example is I use Instagram for community building. The fact that you've got the DM features and I've got my stories and all that kind of stuff, it allows me to communicate with my audience on a different level than I can on other social media channels, right? TikTok is really great for awareness and and getting my name out there and getting my content in front of people who don't follow me already. And YouTube is a great platform for me to really establish my authority within my niche because I have the ability to create longer videos which really demonstrate how much I know about this subject, right? So you might want to review the different social channels that you're using and get really specific about how you use each of them. All right, let's take a quick break because I have a free resource for you which is going to massively help you on your social media journey. One of the biggest ways for you to reach your goals is to ensure that you are remaining on top of different social media trends. And I know how difficult that can be, which is why I wanna share this resource with you because it's gonna massively help you out. So the free resource is called Social Media Trends Report and it is by HubSpot. It analyzes a whole wealth of data to break down the top trends on social media, along with all of the opportunities and the challenges that they bring. These trends make using data to inform your social media strategy or your different decisions you're making on social media so much easier. The report includes the top 10 global social media trends in addition to trends on community building, the use of social media for sales and for customer service, all the way through to the use of AI within social media. Now, one of the most impressive things about this report is the fact that it utilizes data from over 1,200 global markets and insights from the Brandwatch consumer research platform. My absolute favorite section is when they break down the top social media channels for influencer marketing, social media ROI, audience growth, and social selling. That is a bit that you don't wanna miss. 
If you want to get your hand on this free resource, which I'm sure you do, be sure to head to the link in my description. All right, so the next social media trend that I predict for 2024, and this one is actually super controversial. I wasn't gonna put it in there, but then I was like, stop being like a scaredy cat and just put it in your video, right? So <laughs> this trend is that Threads is gonna make a comeback. Just saying that on camera just feels like the most permanent thing in the world. But look, just hear me out, hear me out. Threads launched in 2023, and within a short space of time, they accumulated over 100 million users. One of the main reasons why they were able to achieve this wild result is because Threads is connected to Instagram. So it was very easy to create a Threads account, but not only that, when you created a Threads account, you automatically had this built-in audience. Because if you had an audience of followers on Instagram, and if they created a Threads account, they would automatically be following your Threads account. So millions of people joined Threads and millions of people had this built-in audience straight away. What happened after that was this beautiful span of a couple of weeks where everyone was like, oh my God, Threads is the new thing. I love it here. This is great. I love it. Because in case you had forgotten, X previously known as Twitter, was going through a wild time and they still are. So a lot of people were seeking a new social media site, which was a similar format that they could jump on and Threads was just there, shiny, ready and waiting. However, it wasn't all roses and sunshines and rainbows, unfortunately, because further down the line, the Threads usage started to dramatically dip. In fact, at one point, the usage had dropped by over 85%. So you might be thinking, Jade, with all of that in mind, why on earth are you saying that this is gonna make a comeback in 2000? 24. Well, let me explain. Let me explain. According to a trend report by Battenhall, which I will link below, Threads is actually on the rise again. And when you compare their downloads from the third quarter of 2023 to the second quarter of 2023, you'll actually notice that Threads actually saw a bigger gain in downloads than the rest of the top 10 social media apps combined. So they have actually started to see a huge increase in the amount of people downloading the Threads app. In addition to that, X, previously known as Twitter, are also continuing to have their own issues. And I actually went to an event recently, and I should note that I've actually been to multiple events where everyone has said a similar thing about Threads that they think it's gonna make a comeback. But I went to an event recently and they were talking about X, specifically the fact that thousands of users have stopped using X, but also hundreds of brands have stopped investing their advertising money into X. And even though I don't want this to be a direct comparison game, it does suggest that there may be an appetite for threads again, and it could potentially start to see a bit of a comeback. It is worth saying that when I say a comeback, I'm not saying that it's going to suddenly be one of the most popular apps in the world and it's going to overtake X. I just think that it's going to grow in usage and actually become a lot more stable when it comes to who is using threads. Now, in terms of additional predictions in relation to this, there's a couple of things that I think is gonna really help threads. First of all, they are massively leveraging the Instagram connection. You've probably noticed that when you scroll on your home feed on Instagram, you'll now see a few popular threads pop up that you can browse between and you can click on and it will open up the threads app. I predict they'll continue to utilize that connection and that's gonna be one of their key methods for growth. In addition to that, I do think they're gonna continuously release new features, which they have been doing quite aggressively so far. And I actually think the lack of these features is one of the reasons why the engagement dropped so quickly. So things like a desktop app and like a DM feature, they're introducing these. And as they continue to introduce these, I predict that engagement levels will slowly increase. Let me know if you disagree in the comments. I'm sure you, I'm sure a lot of people do, but that's okay. It's all healthy debate, guys. I encourage it. <laughs> so what does this trend mean for you? It means that if you were someone who actually loved the idea of threads, maybe you don't like X anymore, but you're looking for another alternative and maybe you dropped out of it because you felt like other people weren't using it very much anymore. It means that this is your sign to not ignore the app. I'm not gonna tell you to drop everything and start focusing on it by any means, but it could be a good opportunity for you to start dipping your toe back in threads and just playing around Round of it to see if it's something that you want to stick with. All right, so my next trend is that UGC isn't going to go anywhere, but it is going to change ever so slightly. UGC has seen a huge amount of growth within the past couple of years. And in case you don't know, UGC stands for user generated content. And I do have a whole video where I talk about how you could become a UGC creator in 30 days or less, which I will link to up here. But essentially it's referring to creators who produce content for brands to use on their channels. Now, what I predict is going to happen next year, because it's slowly started to happen already, is more and more brands will turn to established creators as well as 
UGC creators to actually do these types of partnerships. So what this will basically mean is that if you are a creator who already has a hundred thousand people in their audience, so you're you're a fairly big creator, right? A brand might turn to you to produce a piece of content that they want to use as an ad. They won't ask you to share it on your channels, but they will want to share it on their channels and they will want to use it as an ad. The reason why I think this is going to rise is because brands are starting to test this format a bit more because it essentially allows them to use your likeness. So whilst they're not necessarily asking you to promote their products, they are actually borrowing your likeness and your credibility and they're running ads with that so that people who might already know you might see that ad and it's going to give that brand credibility. Now, is this brand new? Of course it's not. This means people have been doing this for a while. I'm just starting to see it slowly increase in how brands are working with creators. And I've also started to see even more brands putting money behind, which is like a marketing phrase for basically saying, turning a piece of content into an ad, putting money behind creator content too. So I'm seeing more and more deals, both with myself and also people I work with, where creators and influencers are producing content for a brand and they are putting money behind it and turning it into a big campaign. So they're amplifying it. I think this is going to continue to grow and become a major trend in 2024. So what does this trend mean for you and I? If you're a UGC creator, I don't want you to panic. I don't want you to take this trend as confirmation that maybe it's gonna be harder to be a UGC creator. It's not, I just see that continuing to rise. If you're someone who's more of a traditional influencer who creates content for a brand and then shares it on their own channels, you need to look out for opportunities for you to upsell on these partnerships because there's probably gonna be a big chance that some of these campaigns that you land in 2024, a brand might be ready to put money behind it and amplify it. And when that happens, you can charge a usage fee, which basically gives the brand the ability to use your content in different ways, okay? If you want more information of this, I actually have a whole like masterclass vault, which is just a collection of masterclasses all about brand partnerships. And I teach you how to charge for usage rights and how much to charge within that vault. So I'll link to it below, okay? Let's move on to the next trend. This trend is one that I don't want to admit to because it means that I've got to do some more work, but essentially this one's about LinkedIn. And I'm calling this trend, LinkedIn is getting personal. Now, LinkedIn is on the rise, Every event that I've gone to for the past six months, someone has told me that I need to be more active on LinkedIn. It is a thing, people are using it more. A big reason for this is because the way in which we started to use LinkedIn switched during the pandemic. It went from somewhere where everyone was being really stuffy and professional to somewhere where half the people are being stuffy and professional and the other half are just being real and it's getting more personal, right? That trend has continued over time and it's now become a social media site that truly is more social. You can also argue that there's a bit of a generational thing happening here where millennials are now at an age where they have like middle to upper management jobs where LinkedIn is actually quite important for them. But this is also the generation who mostly grew up with social media, not for their whole childhood, but for their teenage years and onwards had social media. So they're using LinkedIn in a more fresh way. They're being more consistent on LinkedIn and they're growing audiences on LinkedIn. So this is all to say in terms of what does this mean for you and I, that you probably need to refresh your LinkedIn channel. You probably need to start uploading LinkedIn a little bit more frequently. If you're like me and maybe you avoided LinkedIn because you don't like writing, that's exactly why I avoided it. We now have AI. So really there's no excuse. You can use ChatGPT or whatever your favorite tool is to actually help you come up with well-written posts that update people on what's going on with your career with ease. So there's really no excuse. So that's another trend for 2024. And it's actually a really great segue to the next trend. This final trend is all about, you guessed it, AI. Obviously I was gonna talk about AI. There's no way I could have done this video without talking about it. So AI has been quite the buzzword. And I think the year of 2023 was the year when AI was starting to gather some steam and people were starting to rip the bandaid off and start to use different tools. I think 2024 will be the year where it really becomes part of our workflows and it really cements itself in the way that we use social media and produce content. So there's a few different elements to this trend. The first will be the rise in AI, which aid the content creation process. A good example of this is a new update being released by YouTube called Dream Screen, which will allow you to insert a prompt and create a visual using AI. It's basically a term of AI called generative AI. If you wanna know more about YouTube updates, watch this video, because I break down all of them in there and there are some huge ones in there. Another side to this AI trend is going to be the rise in AI creators. It's not as scary as it sounds. It's actually been around for a while. Have you guys heard about VTubers, which are like virtual YouTubers? It's essentially that, but it will take on new forms. For example, Meta's chatbots, which are basically these 
profiles that they created using celebrities likeness. They have like a Kendall Jenner one and like a Charlie D'Amelio one where these Instagram profiles look like these celebrities, but have different names and different personas. And you can message them and DM them and they respond to you. So it's not actually Kendall Jenner. I feel like I should just put that on the record. It's not Kendall Jenner responding. It's someone who looks like Kendall Jenner, which is super weird. So let's move on. <laughs> Another element to this trend is the fact that AI may allow creators to unlock a new way to earn income. I've spoken about this before, but there are tools that are currently being tested and released, which will allow creators to add things to their videos after they filmed them. So let's say I get a brand partnership with a computer brand and they wanna be in this video that I'm filming right now, but we negotiate this partnership weeks after I film this. I could use AI to do product placement in this video and put the laptop in the background and earn income from that. Watch your space on that one because that could be pretty major. All right, guys, that is all of the trends. I really enjoyed filming that. I really want to know what you guys think about the trends. So make sure you let me know in the comments. If you feel like hanging around, I recommend watching this video. It's all about the steps that you can take if you feel like nothing is working on social media and you're really struggling to grow. Do not forget to head to the link in my description to get your hands on HubSpot's social media trends report. Thank you so much for watching as always. I'll see you in the next video.